Hello, what is up responsible day traders? Today is Monday, March 7th, 2022. I'm Lindsay Duff and this is responsible day trading. Uh, I am losing my mind this morning. I was having some problems with my program. We have COVID in the house. I do not currently have it, but my 19 year old does. So she is locked in her room with a hot pad, uh, a hot plate and, uh, and lots of food. So <laughs> keep me in your good thoughts. <laughs> that I don't get it. I'm scared. I've had it before and you know, she has too. And just seeing the way that she's reacting, she is, it's much worse for her this time. Okay. On another note, I did do some trading last night. Um, I was kind of been a little while, so I wanted to get in some trading. I did some last week. I actually have a video I need to put in the vault, so I'll get on that. I'll make sure it's out either today or tomorrow. Um, it's just a vault video uh, going over Friday because Friday was just ugly, so I didn't touch anything. I did do about $7,000 last week. Uh, today I did, or last night I did 3,700. And we'll look over that in just a little bit, but first let's go through what we're seeing in the market. So we're going to start off as always with the news. Alrighty. So let's go ahead, head over to news. We'll go to market news. I'm going to try and make this pretty quick because, um, I want to get this out today. Oh, we got a light week of news. So nothing today, tomorrow at 11 AM, we have some news coming out, uh, Wednesday nine and nine 30. So after market opens, this one might be a little bit of a, a surprise, right? Cause it's at 11. We're used to having those a little bit earlier in the day. And then Thursday we have some pre-market, nothing on Friday. So it's a little lighter this week than what we've been seeing. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and pull up the charts. I'm going to start off as always with my daily chart. So here we are with the daily chart and let's talk a little bit about what's going on here now. Yesterday, when I was watching this, I was really looking at this right here saying, man, we pulled up to that top Bollinger band right here and we're rolling off of it, which is what has pushed this back to the downside. Now, a couple of things about this. Our price has moved all the way back down towards this area that we marked back in October of last year. Um, so it's pulled all the way back down to this area and it's just kind of sitting here. We can see it looks like it's trying to create a reversal bar and this BB did not do much to come down. Can it still? Absolutely. Um, but right now it kind of looks like we're trying to make a W pivot. I guess we're going to see if this is going to follow through or fail, but this BB right here, it's early, early in the day that can turn blue, pop up and move outside, or we'll see it stay purple and push down towards that bottom Bollinger band. So it's really going to just be a case of watch and wait with that kind of thing. I mean, and that's really what every case is for trading and coming out with some viable uh, winners because we want to wait and we want to see what's happening before we really make a decision. If we don't wait, it's, it could change very easily. All right. So 28,657, you know, one thing I do want to point out is we started out this Monday also again with a gap. So here's last week's gap right in here. And here is last night's gap. It is a much smaller gap, much easier to close. So something like this may not always get closed whenever it's just a tiny gap, giant gaps like this almost always get closed. Now we've pulled up to that gap area. We haven't really pushed through it. If I'm looking at my 20, 28,657 right here, uh, what I'm looking at is that we pulled down to this area several, several times and have not been able to break through it. Now we've seen it happen before and it broke through it, but look at the difference in the way this looks when it broke through it as we were pulling back and pushing down with the EMA starting to open up with strength. And here we're just getting the EMAs to start opening up. So we may not see the same kind of results here um, 
or here as we did here. Now we pulled right back down to this area once again, and I'll circle this little area again. And we're pushing off of the bottom Bollinger band area or off that support area with a little bit of strength. It's coming up to that top Bollinger band and at the EMAs. So this would be a point where you say, okay, are we going to see this BB pick up the strength, push through this top Bollinger band and start making its way back up? Or is the EMAs, you know, are the EMAs opening up to the downside? going to be are the emas opening up to the downside going to be the determining factor that this is going to push it back down it's a little hard to see that happening right now and let's go to our smaller tick charts and see what's going on so if i come over here to my 10946 we can see a lot of strength in the macd's to the upside now there was a lot of strength to the macd's to the downside here it took a pullback and a push through to stop it right? So we may need to see that same kind of thing happen here in order for it to um, push back to the upside. I'm going to put just a couple of arrow areas of uh, support so we can just keep our eyes on all this. And let's see here, here. Boom, boom. Okay. All right, so we've got some areas and we can see we are actually coming up to an area that's held more than once. So as we're at this zero line or as we're at this EMA, um, this could hold. So let's talk about what the direction is and what the anticipation is. Currently, the direction is technically to the downside on the 10946. We can see we have been below the EMAs and we're just coming back above the zero line. We don't have back above both the EMAs and the zero line where, which is when we really start saying, okay, the direction has shifted to the upside. Do we see possibilities for this to move up? Absolutely. We do with this pullback that happened right into this EMA and it's pushing to the upside with this strength going up, we may see it push through these EMAs and higher but we're really gonna to need to get back above these areas before we can say, okay, yeah, we're definitely working on a an uptrend at this time. Uh, if we're looking at the 1597, the direction is up. So we're above the zero line, we're above the EMAs, EMAs are trying to open up to the upside. If you were going to take a long trade, it would have needed to be from back here, which is a 10 point difference from where it's at right now. Right now it's trying to give a reversal bar and very weak movement in the MACDs to the upside. So it says we have a possibility or we have a good chance for this to pull back in. Now with the MACDs being weak right here on the 1597 and not pushing to the upside just yet, there's a pretty good possibility of seeing this happen, pulling back down into this area, right back down into the EMAs here. And at that time, what we have to do is we have to really look at the MACDs and judge what they're saying. Do these blue MACD BBs turn purple and push really hard to the downside, something kind of like this? Or do they do a weak retracement to the downside and just kind of sit around the zero line and back at this EMA before it pushes back up? So we can't anticipate that until it starts to happen, right? So it's like we have to think about what's happening now and what are the possibilities in the future if when, you know, if then. So those that's what I always say. Like, if this happens, then what are we going to do? So we have to really think if then, if this happens, then what are the possibilities? So if this does push back down towards the zero line and pull back here, what are the possibilities of being able to take along? They're pretty good. Now, if you're looking at the 233, right now it's trying to set you up with the long, but we're not trading the 233, we're trading the 1597. And this sucker is what I call out in the middle. What do I mean by out in the middle? Well, we're not really near the high. We're not really near the low. Very weak MACDs to the upside here. It could very easily pull back deeper. So that out in the middle doesn't allow you to have your risk in the right place. Now, can you try and take this trade to the upside? Sure. If you want to, you all 
all, more power to you. Okay. Uh, it's not something that I would trade at this moment because I'd be really concerned with if it pulls up to this area, what I'm anticipating to happen after a reversal bar and weak MACDs to the upside. Now my 10,946 MACDs are still pushing up with some strength. So it may give it that umph to continue up, but I'm going to sit and wait for a minute. So let's go ahead and go over yesterday's trades really, really quick. And I'll pull this over so we can see real quick. I had, um, and I was doing some, I was adding on two and three contracts at a time, but I did only have two losses. Thank goodness. I did have a couple of really small winners though. So let's just take a quick peek at it. Um, let me turn this on and let me turn it on here. And let's see. First trade was right around five o'clock. Is that it right there? Yeah. Okay. First trade was a short here. I got 10 points and then seven points right in here. And this looks like a mess. So I'm actually going to turn it off here because it was easier to uh, watch from the smaller tick charts. So we're just going to boom. Plus 10, plus seven. Okay, and there's two exits right here. One at the top and one at the bottom. So it was plus 10, plus seven, and then plus 10. Then the next one was just a two tick winner. So let's find the next one. Oh, I stepped away for about two hours. That's what it was. Man, I was really expecting this to go up. Okay. And I tried a couple times to push it, but what I did was I didn't allow myself to have too much risk on some of these. So this one, I only got a point, uh, plus 1.0 cause I got one tick per this one. I lost the full, uh, minus 10 points. I was really trying to force it up. One of the things that I was seeing was the way the MACDs just kept continuing up here. And I was really trying to get on board with that, but the MACDs were still showing strength to the downside here. So that was the little bit of the hard part. And that's why I was choosing to get out of these fairly quickly whenever that was happening. So took another short after that in total, the three exits. 250. Okay. And we took the long, it had pulled down. I remember it pulling down right to my stop, but did not touch it. Uh, and then this one was, oh, hold on. This one's actually one, two, three. Or 3.25. Sorry, I left one of the contracts out. Uh, right here, there's just kind of a couple of different exits, and then there was one right in here. Actually, those are a couple different exits. This is the entry for the next one. And then I got plus 10 and then plus 6. And here I tried one last time to make it go up. Wasn't quite there yet. I waited for here. So this one, I did lose 10 points. And then I entered in twice. I did one with four contracts and then one with two contracts. And so at this point they came out plus 4.5 plus 10. And I'll tell you what got me into this one in just a second. Uh, plus 6.5 plus 9.5. Oh, and then I did take one more after that. And it was only two, uh, two contracts cause it accidentally put in just a two. 
Um, and then plus 8.25. Or if you're looking that in currency, that's plus 3,700. Okay. So I don't really feel like I need to trade today, which is great because I'm exhausted. So I will probably be taking a nap. But that's how you do it right there, guys. Um, you know, if you don't feel like trading during the day, you can always trade at night. OK, and um, I mean, it moves a lot slower. So I did find myself trying to jump in a little early to some of these trades. But, you know, it's. Uh, I think I was trading for about two hours yesterday. I did do one trade early in the right after the market opened. So I did one trade. At, it was at 520. Then I came back at 720 and I traded until 920. So really about two hours in total, because um, you can see this one was over in just a minute's time. So, um, yeah, before commissions, 3700, I'll take it. OK, um, I'm running really, really behind today. This video needs to be out already <laughs> and I still got to edit it. So I hope that everybody has a great day. Um, stay safe out there. I'm just going to take a quick look, although you can't see it. Where is my 233? Um, oh, I just minimized it. Uh, it does look like it pulled back. No, oh, it did. Now let me show it really quick. You can see here it did pull back and push right up there. So, you know, I wouldn't have taken that trade, but um, was it a valid trade? Sure. It crosses over reversal bars, rolling inside of the Bollinger Band, slowing down at the zero line. Uh, as we're pulling back up to this area where the MACDs are leading much, much lower. So I would be anticipating this to still give a pullback. So uh, either I'm waiting for the pullback or I'm jumping in early into longs that I'm not comfortable with. So I'm just going to wait. <laughs> so, all right, guys, that is going to wrap that up. I hope that everybody has a wonderful week. Don't forget, we still have 25% off you profit trader with the code March 25. Oh, also we have the tax webinar video out now. So go back and watch that. If you've got questions over us, hit us up. But um, there was a lot of great questions and a lot of great information from that video. So uh, go and check it out and let me know what you think. So, all right, guys, I hope everybody has a great day. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, guys, you know that I look forward to catching you on the profitable side.